today is the most crucial game of the season, isn't it, Dad? It really is. It really is today. Um, obviously, if we get a win here, it could be vital, but we have to rely on other results like Sunderland and Preston to either draw or lose, or Millwall and Blackburn for a draw, or maybe like maybe Millwall win, I guess. Blackburn win, I don't really know actually what the table is at the moment, but yeah, today is very vital. Um, obviously, we are on, I think, 66 points, and uh, Coventry are fifth on 69, so it is very close. It's definitely the closest playoff battle we've had for a long time. So, predictions. Right. I might say 3 0 win. I just hope that they're not playing a, um, a, a team right now because. If I do that, then we could be a bit struck. I won't be as optimistic, but um, yeah, I'll change my prediction if I put out an 80, but yeah, it's probably not going to happen today. It's probably not going to happen. Playoffs are probably not happening. But I mean, it could always happen next season. Hopefully, if Carlos does stay, we could be up there. Definitely be up there. So yeah, Dad, what's your predictions for today's game? What's your thoughts and feelings? About I'm not it? quite as optimistic as you, son. However, saying that, I remember a, a deep, dark day in October when we played Sheffield United, which was Carlos Corbrand's first game. Yeah. And, and for the first time, I really sat in my seat at the Hawthorns thinking, we're in serious trouble, we, we're going to get relegated. Both did. So to come to the end of the season and still have an opportunity for playoffs, it's, it's an amazing turnaround. Especially when you think about the amount of injuries that we've had over the last three months, some critical injuries, uh, with Palmer going off injured, uh, obviously, Matty Phillips, Dean Garner, there's a lot of injuries that we've had. So, really, Carlos, really is King Carlos. He's done a fantastic job for us really and to get us into this position. Um, personally, I think it's a little bit too late for us. I think Sunderland will, will nick a win today away at Preston, uh, or maybe even at home at Preston, I can't remember. I don't um, know why. To, again, against Swansea, always tough for them. Against us, they always play well. Uh, they've been the form team in the division. I, I, I think uh, Sun just told me that they haven't actually lost a game since March. That is mad. Which is incredible. So, uh, yeah, Russ Martin doing a great job down at Swansea. Um, I'm going to say today a 1 1 draw. Uh, I think Sunderland's going to nick it uh, and we'll look forward to next season and we'll go again. So, come on, you baggies. Come on, you baggies. So, I think if they play their A team, I might say 2 1. Um, Honestly, yeah, it's going to be a very, very difficult game because we haven't won there for years, you know, so, yeah. It's been so five I guess, years, I think, is yeah, Four or five years since we've last won there. So, so yeah, uh, I'll tell you the top goal scorers in the second and the top assistors. So first on the leaderboard for Swansea for goals is Joel Perot. Then it's Liam Cullen with eight goals. Uh, uh, Joel Perot's got 18. And uh, Oliver Encham with seven goals. So yeah, I'll tell you the West Brom top three goal scorers and assists in, in a moment. So the top three goal scorers for West Brom are Dal Deco with seven, Brandon Thomas Santo with seven, and Jim Wallace with six. So the top assists for West Brom are John Swift, Jeb Wallace, and Jason Mullumbo. Because um, John Swift and Jeb Wallace have both got eight, and Mullumbo has got four. So yeah. So the top assisters, top three assisters for um, Swansea are Ryan Manning with nine. The next one is Matt Grimes with seven, and then Luke Cundin with four assists. There you go. So yeah, those are the top three assisters for Swansea. Go. And just a little reminder for all you senior baggies out there. I remember a, a night in May 1993, playoff semi-final against Swansea City. I've got to say, probably the best atmosphere I've ever experienced at the Hawthorns in that Birmingham Road end. I don't think my feet even touched the ground. An amazing, amazing night that was uh, on our way to Wembley. So let's hope we can do something similar against Swansea today. So come on, you baggies. Come on, you baggies. Um.
hope you enjoy the day and hope you don't have yourself in those days. The next year, my most maintain is that this will be your home speaker. Is it all seen the stadium? And it is the way that you remain seated for the most important year. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They've made a complete mess of that. It's swift, rolled square, and rolled in by Yakushlu. We'll rolled into Pats and the chance, and a goal for Kandor. There's the. All right, Baginson, so this is half-time review, so 1-1 uh, at the interval. Um, looks like Yakoshi with the goal. Who, who scored the other one? This one, so. Kundal. Yeah, Kundal. Kundal with the other goal. 1-1, one, one, all squared. Uh, it was in class about 10 minutes, and it's uh, all crashing and burning down, so we'll see you at full-time. There it goes to the far post. It was a jam, lets the ball run across his body and smashes it home. It's 2 2. It's Piro. Beautiful. So the match is finished a long time ago, 3-2, and yeah, well that's completely end our season. Playoffs is completely gone. Um, congrats on Sunderland by the way to get in playoffs at Coventry. Uh, obviously Sunderland just got promoted last season and are in the playoffs again this season. So yeah, it's going to be mad to, uh, to see a League One side from last season into the playoffs this season. So yeah, Tony Mowbray, what a job he's doing at Sunderland. Um, so yeah, it weren't the best game today, obviously, because we lost 3-2, but there were some positives and some negatives, I guess you'd say. Um, I think a negative would be we are lacking in the back line a bit. Our defending isn't very great. Um, that's for one. I think Eric Peters is timed up now, I think. Um, I don't think we should extend his contract really. So, yeah. Another negative I think today would be that we're too slow attacking. We are really slow attacking. We've seen that today many times. I mean, Jeff Wallace has got the ball in the you know top right corner, just messes around with it. We don't actually put it in the box until we pass the furlong and he like, puts it in. So, yeah, it gets a positive as well. Today, that Ajay scored, he scored an absolute banger today, um, which I thought, yeah, it was brilliant. I've never seen a centre back score such a goal. So, so yeah. Dad, what is your thoughts and feelings of the game? Well, I think we ended up, uh, it's an old cliche that the league table doesn't lie, and uh, it's fair to say it doesn't lie where we're not good enough. As we said earlier, considering where we were in October to where we finished at the end of the season, I think all Albion fans would have uh, been really happy with that. But we're not good enough and no. you know, we come back to the spine of the team, central defence, the, the, the engine room and the guy who puts the ball in the net, which we've been sadly lacking. But uh, hey ho, another season, who knows, things happen for a reason, let's see you next year, Baggies. And we've also had word that Carlos Corbran is sticking around with us, so yeah, let's see what signing he, he makes for next season and um, hopefully we can get rid of all that Deadwood, Furlong, Adam Reach, Button, Tom Rogic, yeah all them players. Hopefully we can bring in some players from obscure nations. 
<laughs> Brazilian wonder kids. Brazilian wonder kids. Japanese workhorses. <laughs> yep. Let's do it. I'll see you guys next season. Goodbye and have a good night. <laughs>